Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, uh, here in the Point Lonesome Swamp, in the middle of the oasis of freedom on this spectacularly gorgeous, it is Saturday. January 15th, 2022, as I say, I keep hearing some rumor about some winter storm. Winter storm, oh yeah. Looks pretty stormy to me, but anyway, since it is Saturday, it is time for what I try to do every Saturday, kind of hit and miss. And this is going to be our hopium roundup, our apocaloptimism hopium roundup for the week and uh, <clears throat> I need to thank my dear sister my very own dear sister uh, <laughs> for sending me this <coughs> this uh, tsunami of uh, hopium horseshit from uh, none other than the Economist magazine uh, for people wondering how much uh, you know people in my real life pay attention to anything that I have had to say about the downward trajectory of uh, American culture, global industrial civilization, and the collapse of a planet. Uh, this should give you some idea uh, from my own sister. <clears throat> She sent me this. This is uh, the Economist. Looking forward. This was this was my my sister's message to me. She sent this out to several people. <clears throat> now these are some cool and encouraging, huh, huh, hopeful ideas for the world. Exclamation point. So this is my own sister's definition of cool, encouraging, and hopeful ideas for the world coming from the economist. <laughs> Not to be confused with the ecologist. All right. The economist is looking at the world ahead in 2022. What next? 22 emerging technologies to watch in 2022. And guys, there's 22 of these, so obviously I cannot uh, dive in to, uh, I will put the link on here and you can read this whole pile of horseshit about, uh, what did my sister call them? Uh, cool, encouraging, and hopeful ideas. All right, according to The Economist, here are 22 emerging technologies worth watching in 2022. And of course, uh, as I have been predicting since 2008, in 2008, uh, I was predicting, look, start looking for the mainstream media cheerleading this idea and that of course would be solar geoengineering what uh, some of those conspiracy wackos call chemtrails which is exactly what they're going to be all right <clears throat> take it away economist it sounds childishly simple if the world is getting too hot why not offer it some shade the dust and ash released into the upper atmosphere by volcanoes is known to have a cooling effect. Hmm. So, solar geoengineering, also known as solar, ran solar radiation management, would do the same thing deliberately. Now, even my sister, uh, even my sister, bless her heart, uh, even she said, eh, maybe, 
not on the number one of the 22 technologies to watch. Uh, solar geoengineering, I guess the editors of the economists have not read that book that I need to read. What's it called? Under a Milky White Sky. This is, if this happens, what this means is you can kiss goodbye blue sky for the rest of your life. You will never see blue sky again. You will never see, apparently, you will never see a sunrise, a sunset again. And I'm a little unclear whether you will ever see the moon or stars again. Once we open this can of worms, we cannot shut it. And here is The Economist making uh, in their number one cheerleading of emerging technologies uh, kissing goodbye blue skies and possibly uh, the science of astronomy. Uh, you, you, you know, this solar geoengineering, this is the classic example of frying pan or the fire. This more than, as much as any reason why this planet is doomed. If we don't, we're doomed. If we do, we're doomed. We're doomed if we do, doomed if we don't. And, and uh, solar geoengineering leading the pack, but I'm glad at least my sister understands that maybe this is not a good thing. And I don't know if, uh, if there's any particular order from here on out. Number two, heat pumps. Yes, heat pumps. Number three, we, we, we've barely e even talked about hydrogen-powered cars, which we've been talking about. As I say, you can find a, a YouTube from 1978 with Jack Nicholson driving his hydrogen-powered car, but the economist, is, forget about cars, how about hydrogen-powered airplanes? Yes, hydrogen-powered airplanes. All right, kind of going on hand-in-hand uh, hand with solar geoengineering. Do not forget direct air capture, meaning sucking CO2 out of the uh, out of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere causes global warming. So why not suck it out using machines? Why not suck out carbon dioxide? Just, just suck it out of the air. Uh, we have had many rants about sucking CO2 out of the air. Don't have time to report that one. Here, here is the next knee slapper, which I'm sure I have mentioned. That this whole unadulterated horseshit of vertical farming. A new type of agriculture is growing. Vertical farms grow plants on trays stacked in a closed, controlled environment. They're, they're basically, you, you know, talking about, I, kind of, it's kind of a cross between greenhouses and skyscrapers, which, you know, if you are a billionaire uh, looking for a $10,000 head of lettuce, uh, maybe uh, that this idea will work for you. It, it, uh, th there is this thing called scalability. Scalability, which you will not find the words scalability anywhere in this unadulterated horseshit. Uh, in, in these 22 ideas, uh, what, what can technically work in, in a tiny little controlled laboratory setting, trying to scale it up uh, as a solution uh, to, to what's going on on this planet. 
I, I want to see what a scalable wheat field looks like, what a scalable corn field looks like, what a scalable rice paddy, maybe a scalable potato farm. Uh, what is it that at like probably 80 percent uh, of our uh, food boils down to grains and uh, it, it <laughs> you know what works for lettuce to feed a few billionaires who can afford to buy a ten thousand dollar head of lettuce unfortunately might not work uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. All right. Container ships with sails. Ships produce 3% of greenhouse gas emissions, burning maritime bunker fuel, a dirty diesel sludge, also contributes to acid rain. None of this was a problem in the age of sail, which is why sails are making a comeback. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, now, now this is one that uh, if you are a fan of James Howard Kunstler, you might uh, agree with that I do believe sailing ships will make a comeback. All right. Probably, I don't know, people are always wanting me to put a date on this. You can expect sailing ships to make a comeback, but they're not going to be pushing around 75-inch uh, giant flat-screen TVs from China to California. They're probably going to be carrying climate refugees <coughs> around is my guess. Uh, anyway, how about virtual reality workouts? <coughs> uh, anyway, okay, now, now this is one <coughs> when I took a little bit of exception to this uh, story that my sister sent me. She did agree with me that maybe geoengineering, solar geoengineering, not such a great idea, but she asked me how could I argue against new vaccines being developed for HIV and malaria. Now HIV, okay, uh, I, I am not a, an anti-vaxxer. Uh, my own brother, and of course my sister's brother, our brother died of HIV. Obviously, we wish, uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to let that one sit there. But my problem, <clears throat> if I am an anti-vaxxer, it is because with one glaring exception that we do not need to talk about, uh, the problem with vaccines up until very recently is that they not only work, but they work too damn well. And uh, a, a malaria vaccine uh, <clears throat> if, if, if it is developed, you know, I am giving every fellow earthling uh, in Africa that humans share the planet with, I am giving them till about 2050. If, if, if we develop a, an effective malaria vaccine, okay, you can kiss goodbye every single fellow earthling in sub-Saharan Africa that humans in sub-Saharan Africa share the planet with. It's that simple. <clears throat> there is a reason that Mother Nature created malaria and all of these other uh, diseases that uh, vaccines and antibiotics, uh, particularly those two and other medications, 
uh, are, are preventing. It, it is called the system of checks and balances. Uh, disease is the way that Mother Nature prevents a species, talking about this one now, from overshooting their carrying capacity. If there were no vaccines, no antibiotics, or any of this other shit, uh, I would probably be dead. My sister would probably be dead. And probably seven out of eight of you listening to this would be dead, which is a good thing for the planet. The population of this planet would probably be less than 1 billion people where it was for about 300,000 years so till we started inventing this shit and playing God. All right, if you are a human, if you think the highest and best use of planet Earth, as my sister obviously believes, is to see how many humans we can pack onto it, you will be in full support of a malaria vaccine. It's that simple. <clears throat> If you do not believe the highest and best use of a planet is to see how many humans we can stuff onto it and maybe would like to leave a little bit of the planet for the other 10 million species of earthlings we share this planet with, you might not think malaria vaccines and all of this crap are such a good idea. That is the bottom line. <clears throat> all right. 3D printed <coughs> bone implants. It's a talk, talking about bones and all of these internal organs. I guess, I don't know if your liver uh, starts to rot, just to hook your liver up to a, uh, a, a, a 3D printer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> the age of the Jetsons is alive and well. I, I could swear I remember being six years old, uh, listening to this one, flying electric taxis. Yes, long seen as something of a fantasy, flying taxis or electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, as the fledgling industry calls it, are getting serious. Which ties right into this space tourism yes <clears throat> after a standout year for space tourism in 2021 as a succession of billionaire backed efforts shot civilians into the skies <coughs> hopes are high for 2022 Yes. Now here's one I do expect that will come true. Delivery drones. Delivery drones are taking longer than expected to get off the ground, but new rules which came into effect last year will help drone deliveries gain altitude in 2022. And it's not just delivery drones, uh, it, it is all kinds of drones. My buddy and I, <clears throat> we were out camping last week in the middle of nowhere, trying to enjoy a margarita on the banks of the Peace River out in the middle of nowhere. This was one week ago, one week ago tonight. And this drone, appears out of nowhere and starts circling us. I'm assuming taking pictures of us. We have no idea where this drone came from, uh, what it was doing there, what it was going to do with whatever information, but anyway, uh, delivery drones and every other kind of drone. Uh, and, of course, these drones are going to be getting smaller and smaller. 
All right, next, quieter supersonic aircraft. And um, while they're working on quieter supersonic aircraft, can they work on some quieter airboats? Who needs supersonic aircraft when we have airboats? Now this next one, 3D printed houses. Yes, where materials are squirted out of a nozzle as a foam that then hardens. Layer by layer, a house is printed. And uh, they didn't have to wait long for that. Uh, in, in yesterday's, in, in yesterday's uh, mainstream media news, uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, was celebrating its first 3D printed house. Now, I'm on the fence about this. I, I admit I'm not that versed. I would have to find out, do 3D printed houses have less of an ecological footprint than, uh, you know, than regular built houses? And if they do, uh, you know, I guess I will give my nod to 3D printed houses, depending on the, uh, the, the footprint of the technology. Here's one I'm okay with, Sleep Tech, talking about uh, all the ways they're coming up with to help you get a better night's sleep. And uh, I would probably buy into that. You know, some of these are like, huh, like personalized nutrition. Uh, yeah, personalized nutrition kind of going hand in hand with the next one. Wearable health trackers. Yes. Uh, such as the Fitbit and the Apple Watch. Uh, but the line between consumer and medical uh, use of such devices is now blurring. Uh, anyway, okay, now this one here, several of you have, have asked to hear a full rant on this, and that is the metaverse. Coined in 1992 by Neil Stevenson in his novel Snow Crash, the word metaverse referred to a persistent virtual world accessible via special goggles where people could meet, flirt, play games, buy and sell things, and much more. There you go. I anyway, guys, this could be my, my basic criticism of the metaverse, and I admit I have not studied it that much. Uh, it, it holds no interest to me. My basic criticism of this is that the metaverse is just the latest way to separate humanity from the earth. Uh, it, it, it is just the latest step to, to, as Woody Allen would say, become two with nature. It is getting us farther and farther away from direct experience with Mother Earth. Every time we take one of these steps, we lose our connection with our home planet, and in the and the more and more the disconnected we get from our home planet, the more we are going to abuse it, because it is it, is just turning us more and more into clueless morons totally disconnecting ourselves uh, from, from this planet. 
it, it, it is uh, it, it is just it, it, it's just a, a latest sign of, of how clueless and doomed we are the metaverse uh, anyway and of course going hand in hand with that is quantum uh, computing uh, you, you know uh, my problem with quantum computing is uh, it, it is pretty much uh, my problem with the internet and and that is that <clears throat> it's just the internet on steroids is computers on steroids that the net result of quantum computing is that it will be used by planet eating industries to ramp up our assaults on this planet make no mistake about it who is going to be taking advantage of the quantum computing for every one step quantum computing is going to be used to save this planet 99 steps are going to be used to increase humanity's efficiency at destroying the planet that is going to be the net result of the vast majority of this stuff. I, I love this one. Uh, out of nowhere, virtual influencers. Unlike a human influencer, unlike a human influencer, a virtual influencer will never be late to a photo shoot, get drunk, at a party or get old. Yes, that is because virtual influencers are computer-generated characters who plug products on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. TikTok. The best known is little Michaela a fictitious Brazilian-American 19-year-old with 3 million Instagram followers. Anybody, uh, and, and my guess is that 2.9 million of the, uh, those Instagram followers are probably under 30 years old. The, the, this is the latest idea of... Uh, of how uh, j j just completely hopeless it is thinking that this next generation of clueless morons, this is a way to sell this planet-eating, worthless crap is what it is. Virtual influencers. A three million clueless morons buying this crap uh, from a little whatever, and uh, then of course, which uh, draw the dots between that one and brain interfaces, brain interfaces, which of course is the next giant step towards the singularity of, uh, you know, basically, uh, basically uploading human consciousness to a machine where we can finally just completely sever every connection we have to our mother. It, it is the final slice of the umbilical cord, uh, what's left of it, connecting uh, the human species to Mother Nature, brain interfaces. In April of 2021, that irrepressible entrepreneur, Elon Musk, you know, Times Person of the Year, excitedly tweeted that a monkey was, quote, literally playing a video game telepathically using a brain 
chip. His company, Neuralink, had implanted two sets of electrodes directly into the monkey's brain. Signals from these electrodes transmitted wirelessly and then decoded by a nearby in computer enabled the monkey to move the on-screen paddle in a game of Pong using his thoughts alone. There you go. Ah, uh, brain interface. What did you call that, Narlin? What did my sister call brain interfaces? Cool, encouraging, and hopeful ideas for the world. But this last one, finally, one I can get behind, and that is artificial meat and fish. Uh, otherwise known as lab-grown meat. Uh, of course, it's going to be outrageously expensive. So what they're talking about is, you know, taking probably stem cells uh, from uh, cows and pigs and chickens and just, you know, raising, uh, I, I, I don't know, a rack of ribs in, in the lab. So uh, the animal rights activist, uh, I, I really don't have that much of a problem. Uh, I, I would have no problem uh, e eating a lab-grown pork chop, uh, except for the price on it. This is just one more of these little toys uh, that the 1% are, are going to enjoy uh, while the 99% of us clueless, useless eaters are going to go right on eating uh, real pigs and chickens and stuff. But anyway, we have reached the list of the 22 uh, cool, uh, whatever, cool, exciting, and <laughs> hopeful Inventions to watch, according to my sister and the economist. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to wrap this up and get out there and enjoy this absolutely gorgeous day, trying to somewhat stay connected to my own mother, despite every, every uh, effort of the global industrial economy to get us farther and farther and farther away from uh, our connection to Mother Earth. And I'm sure as hell going to enjoy these gorgeous blue skies uh, while I still can. And anybody who enjoys blue skies, sun uh, rises, sunsets, the moon and the stars, I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy all of that stuff while you still can. Bye, guys.